Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshiks main room channel. This is Moshiks and today we're going to be exploring something new which we've never done before in this channel which is automation of the ISPF environment with macros. Everybody has uh, been playing around with macros since the dawn of computing. We know that macros by the very definition are uh, short programs that do one thing, one very specific thing, or accomplish one thing usually uh, automation and usually uh, it, it is about um, user interaction automation. Uh, when you work with ISPF, uh, one of the things that everybody finds annoying after a while, especially if you have to do it several times a day, is create a new job card at the beginning of a new JCL, JCL procedure or JCL um, uh, stream of cards um, to submit to MBS or to, to ZOS. And so today we're going to be looking at how we can use a, a macro, an ISPF macro, to automate the creation of a job card. So um, I have here, I'm connected here to the uh, data center of the Leipzig University in Germany. They have very graciously granted me a TSO logon, which I've been using very, very intensively on a real mainframe. This is a Z114 IBM mainframe, which uh, we looked into one of the previous videos. And so I will log in here. Uh, oops, and it disconnected me. Not why? Okay. And we're back on. Alrighty, so logged in here at the data center mainframe of the Leipzig University. Thank you again, Leipzig University. Uh, very, very appreciative for uh, this account of being granted on a real mainframe. And um, what I, while I was on vacation the last couple of weeks, I filed, I took with me a mainframe computer magazine from, I guess, from the 70s or the 80s. And that contained a little program, a LISPF macro, uh, which creates a job card automatic, automatically for the user. And I had to type it again because I couldn't find it anywhere on the internet. Uh, and while I typed it in again, I made a few changes here and there. It's a Rex macro, so we know it must be at least in the 80s because there was no Rex in the 70s. And here it is. So. Right now, what I want to do is um, I put it on my GitHub. So if you go to github.com, uh, as you can see here, slash moshix, you find all my repositories. This one, MBS, has a lot of goodies in here. If you look at the um, README, it has, I should actually update it, but it has dozens of very useful utilities for dealing with uh, mostly MBS and uh, ZOS but also with Zilinux and, uh, and with other things. Uh, you can see here there's a program written in Go, which I wrote here to calculate the ideal block size for any given, um, for any given record length uh, and the given disk. So as you can see here, I have from 2311s all the way to 3390s. And um, so you tell it what kind of, it's a little program I wrote. So there's kind of all kinds of programs in here. Some of them I wrote, a lot of them were written by other smarter people than me and uh, you should come here anytime you want to accomplish something I probably have a utility for it here somewhere there's also by the way an assembler for the uh, for the for Windows that that assembles uh, uh, s370 assembler uh, here I have a lot of uh, JCLs um, for all kinds of stuff like creating uh, this one who sets passwords or anyway, you should come here. It's MVS. Uh, this this one, Moshix uh, slash MVS. And by the way, you should also visit our um, our Facebook uh, page, uh, Facebook fa www.facebook.com slash Moshix channel. Um, there is also the MVS instance uh, that I have in the cloud. All you have to do is access, um, uh, let's do it here, um, moshix.dynu.net, a web page will open up and you fill that out and then you can get a free account on my 
MVS in the cloud, which is up 24 seven. We have over a hundred users there doing stuff. It's a fun community. And also, of course, as I said, the, um, the Moshix channel page on Facebook. Um, anyway, so once you've found uh, the GitHub page, you, what I do is I'll just install as if this was the first time. I've actually done it before, but I deleted from the from this instance at the uh, Leipzig University. So you can see how to install it. It's really very, very simple. Uh, you follow my steps, you'll get it done in no time. The programming question, the macro question is this one, JC macro job card macro dot rex. Um, I want to look at it in raw format so I can do an easy copy and paste. Okay, here is the raw format here. Uh, then I open up my trusty, uh, where is it, notepad plus editor, Windows editor. I really like this editor a lot. No, I don't want to update it. We put it in here. And again, this is uh, pretty much well. Some changes what I typed from the uh, from the computer magazine article. Um, as you know, all the Rex programs need to start with the Rex comment. Okay, so we put it in here and we save it as uh, JC Macro. Let's save it as JC Macro text. Okay, so that's done. Now all we need to do is put this in the right place, which is probably the most uh, complex part of this all. Okay, um, bear with me here. To find out where to put this, uh, every installation is different. You want to put it in the procedure. So TSO itself, um, when it comes up um, and the ISPF comes up, there is a procedure place. Um, there's a data definition in the JCL to bring up TSO where ISPF will look for macros. So we need to find out where that is. And again, this is installation specific, so we have to uh, do it this way. You go here to the, to, the, um, to, the, to the command panel here, okay, option six. And if this is going too fast, just freeze the video and follow me. And we say IS, TSO, ISR, DDN. And if we do this, this shows us all the data concatenations for all aspects of the JCL, which brought this TSO up. And what we want to do is, so if again, if this is going too fast, TSO, ISR, DDN. And once you're here, you want to scroll down until you see sysproc, which is the procedure libraries concatenation. Okay, here there's a, quite a few of those. Perfect, so you see this users to list. That's exactly what this partition data set is here for. That's where people, that's where you want to put in your macros. So we're going to upload the, the macro and we're going to look at it in a while on the, on the editor, on the mainframe. Um, we're going to spend some time on it, but just for now, let's decide where to load, where to upload this. So it's called user Silist. Okay, so let's go have a look at it. 3.4 uh, user.silist. Okay, it's not there yet. I, in fact, I deleted it. And so let's put it up there. I assume I have rights to put it there. We'll find out soon. Um, well, actually, I need to be doing it least this way. Send to host. And we have JC macro. IJ, here it is. And you can do it like uh, user.silist. JC macro. Now I don't know if I have enough permissions to do that. I'm not the system programmer on this mainframe. Okay, it looks like it did it. Did it go through? He crashed my instance here. Ooh, E37, out of space. So it looks like user Silist is out of space. Let's go find out more about user Silist. Yeah, it's completely filled, completely full. 
Can I compress it? Yeah, by compressing it, we find some space. Let's try this again. It's always good when errors happen during my videos because that's when you can learn from my errors so you don't have to do the same errors as I do. Let's try this again. Transfer, send to host. Um, yeah, this time went through. Let's go have a look. Browse. And here it is. Perfect. Now, this is not the most... Um, it doesn't look as beautiful as when I typed it. Some of the indentation got lost in the was as I was uploading it and downloading it again. So let's go find out what this program is. So okay, so let's can we do highlight Rex 14? Oh, highlight Rex. That's better. So this is uh, Rex. Let's put this. More yet. Okay. So here is the um, what makes the job car. First, maybe first of all. Let's just use the job card so you get an idea how it works. It's really very, very simple. So um, let's go here and edit a program. JCL prog YouTube. Um, I actually don't even remember. Um, so let's try to this work um, work work and YouTube. okay so you know let's assume that I want to start create a new job um, any any kind of JCL so now you know that most people what they do is they will go find a another job that were previously written and then copy this like this to copy the job card because that's the most boring part about writing a new JCL and then um, insert it here and then do it here by hand like this uh, so that's not and then you have to go change everything and sometimes you forget one part and then the JCL fails because the job card is often written by hand and so copying it it can be done but it's a multi-step process and um, and you can still make some mistakes so the the macro all you have to do is if you copy it as we just saw before in the in the right place you do JC macro that's it and as you can see it automatically inserts the mad the job card into your new member and several things so first of all it it does this in numbers them consecutively consecutively uh, so if I go out of here and I do YouTube 2 and JC macro you see here this numbers up from 1 so that you can keep those nicely apart um, especially nice if you have working with, with several jobs and you know you start your day with several jobs that you need to create uh, then it puts in your username here which is great for accounting if you use accounting software uh, then it pre-populates here a field uh, that this of course will show up in the printout of the just to printout and uh, you can just easily out here create new backup I don't know something like that uh, then it's for me I set it so that it populates message class held output because that's what I usually do and then notify it already puts in the user ID in the notify field and I set up my region 28 megabytes which is huge obviously for MVS but I would probably be 
on the low end nowadays in, in the ZOS world. And then uh, it says that this was generated by the macro. So you can go and change obviously, but so this is what the macro does. Uh, one thing only, that's what macros usually do, and it does it repeatedly and it works well and it's reliable. So let's go look at this macro, how it accomplishes that. User.silist. There's already a few macros in here. Where's mine? Oh, here it is. So this is a, a Rex macro, obviously, and it interfaces with the ISPF API. And so here we have the parts you can go and change. Uh, notice that it has user ID because that's an ISPF provided a API or you could call it environment variable. Um, here's the part where I have the size and the class execution class. If you if your installation requires a different class, you would change it here. And then a statement comment. And here I would say by JC macro user silist. Let's remove this word. Here's where I miss Vim, my favorite editor. Okay. Uh, by the way, I don't say this enough because you don't see me doing that much stuff on the on Unix or Linux, but the Vim, the editor on Linux, which also is available for Windows, by the way, is just amazing. If for some crazy reason you're not already using Vim, then please turn off your computer and on where you're watching this video on and go think about your life choices because Vim is just an amazing editor that uh, if you spend just three hours learning it properly, your productivity will increase, I would say, by about 200, 300%. Let's say 100% per hour of, of Vim study will increase your productivity by 100%. Uh, but I digress, and so I just wanted to insert this here. Let's go back to the JC macro. Um, so here you can start to see that's where it counts the uses of the macro that we saw in the first field as it counts up as I showed you from one to two, etc. Um, then uh, ISR edit. So here it's interfacing with the editor. And this is the programmer name parameter passed to the macro. The member we know also from uh, from the editor, from the ISPF editor. If length of programmer, here's where we cut the programmer length to um, so that it's the, the field of the job name is not too long. And so it does a substring, it cuts it down to 18, this is the maximum length. Um, then it gets the profile from ISPF. And um, it puts in the number that we saw before. And here is then the substitution that takes place for statement one. And that's why we don't have the first line of the job card. We have it here and not up here because this term transformation needs to do. So it takes the number that we remember. This is, starts with zero and then increases it by one. So it will never be zero. It always start with one. And then the user ID, Moshix in my case, now and then one and then two, etc. And then job Moshix. And then it puts in within the comment section, which you will see on the print output, as we saw before. Puts in the programmer name again. Um, and then it does uh, various other things. So here is, by the way, some um, Rex system programming where it gets the programmer name uh, using the PSA old. So you can see this is another way to do it. Get your name and then the address space control block, extension block. Um, remember when we had some videos where we looked up some tables in the nucleus in the kernel if you want of MVS or in this case ZOS and then does some transformation 
of the data and then gets the username, the login group, the, po the, the point of the username, the programmer name. And it gets this all from this table ACA. And, uh, and that's where it does this uh, magic. As you can see, sometimes uh, you do a little systems programming in a macro and you can create some amazing uh, use, amazingly useful macros. And th when I saw this on this magazine that I was reading in, in print format, uh, this stood out because I've actually uh, made a video. Let's see if you can get this to work. So, YouTube Matrix Rights Systems Program. Let's see if it finds it. Yes, M62. So, as you can see here, um, there's a, there's a, yep. You can watch me here as I write um, a, a, a systems program accessing the nucleus information in Rex. And would you, wouldn't you know it, it does it in a very similar way. I use here a function, the Rex function, um, to uh, convert the data. Whereas this program, this macro we're looking at right now, does it each time and needs to do it. Maybe not as elegant, but it still gets it accomplished. Um, and as you can see here, very similar again goes from PSA, goes to CVT, from the CVT goes to the address based control block, to the address based um, extension block, and then the ACE table. So exactly the same thing. This is the video number M62, as you can see here. And now if you look at this, very similar. Okay, as I said before, they do the conversion each time, whereas I wrote a little Rex function to do the conversion of the data properly. Um, maybe not as this is not as beautiful as I would have done it, but it wouldn't be a big problem. You know, we could just insert here um, bref as I read it, did it there, bref, and then uh, and then make it a function. Um, as you can see here, um, return c2d. That's exactly the same thing, just as a function. So return, and then uh, you could do the same transformation so that it doesn't have to be done here above each and every time. Uh, I would do it like this because it's more elegant uh, and needs to leads to uh, easier to read code, but it works obviously. And so um, that's a great example of what you can use uh, systems programming for in this case. You don't actually have to go and do you know, extend the operating system or hack into it. Sometimes all you want to do is just create a useful macro such as this one. So this is what this Rex macro does. Uh, now that I put it in user syllabus, everybody who's logged in to this um, to the system here at Leipzig University, and again, thank you very, very much Leipzig University for making, uh, for giving me an account on uh, this machine. And um, this is uh, uh, ZOS 2.1, as you can see here from the ISPF version, and uh, and so this is what it does. Um, I'm sure that if we look around, we'll probably find the ISPF macros. Macro. Let's see what else we can find. Creating editing macros. Okay, that's how IBM has a website to explain how to do it. Yeah, we know already where they need to be. Yeah, this we don't, all this we don't need. Um, here seems to be a macro for ZOS 2.1, which is the exact version that we're using here. Uh, SPF editing to process all members of partition data and running a second user specified SPF macro against each other. Okay, so here's another macro. Useful, I guess. Um, ask the ZOS lady. ISPF macros an introduction. You want to put a series of edit commands together into an exec so you can make the same edit changes to several members. Write an ISPF macro. It's easier than it sounds. Here's you have a great introduction. Actually, you haven't even looked at this website ever before, I think. But. Um, Let's put a really recent pre edit mark on your exec library. You'll get create a member called UCXX. This member will change lowercase to uppercase 
but only in excluded lines. Well, that's sometimes very useful. Yeah, so let's, why don't we try this? So, mm, let's do it here. User syllabus UCXX. Okay. Yeah, I sorry, I did. We saw this in the other macro. This is the commands we pass to the command handler, basically to the API. Um, and so what is the difference between this and the other one? Well, this one is written in C list. In, in C -list. So that's the internal programming language of ISPF. And the other one was written in Rex. So we could now go and so we save this and uh, Test let's add YouTube three. This is a test line to be converted. Let's do at least caps off. Caps off. Uh, lowercase. Lowercase. Mm. Spending too much time in CMS lately in uh, ZVM. I've been doing the last two months almost exclusively ZVM stuff. Some very, very interesting stuff on ZVM and uh, Z Linux. Um, so I'm preparing for some videos there in the future, but I've really spent, I would say, probably 200 hours on studying the subject. Uh, so uh, this line stays lower case, upper case. So now I hide this line with X and now I do UCXX. Yes, and this one became uppercase. So this is very useful macro if we want to be selective about which lines we want to convert to uppercase. So uh, let's do this lowercase again. Oh, lowercase. And we have repeat five. And then we do here one, two, three, four, five. So if we wanted to convert very selectively, so we wanted to convert this one and this one, but all the other ones, and maybe this one, but all the other ones we want to stay lowercase, but this the ones that I selected with an X here, we want them to be uppercase. Then we could just do here, uh, what was it, UCXX. And it's much faster than going to each and every line and writing uppercase here, UC on the left side. Um, as you can see here, this works beautifully. So uh, this is as simple an introduction as I can think of. Uh, so this is very, very nice uh, website. I so I'm, I should have found this before. Well, I never looked uh, for an introduction to ISPF macros, but here you can she's teaching you this uh, ask these EOS ladies and some very interesting things so I would advise you to look for ask the EOS lady on um, Google on, uh, on your favorite search engine and then and then look for the SPF macro introduction beautifully done works even this most simple one works beautifully um, ISR box. Okay, well, so you get the idea. Anyway, I mean, you, you need to spend some time if you really want to learn how to do it. But if there's things that you do repetitively in uh, in ISPF, there's probably a way to automate it with a macro. Um, same thing with my favorite editor, Vim. There's a million ways to automate things in Vim, and I and I do use them all the time. So uh, this is a, a very fast, but I think very, very effective introduction into ISPF macros. The one we used at the beginning was in Rex. The one we just found out here on the website is done in Silist. It all works beautifully, or in ISPF really, because all you're really doing is, is involving in calling ISP, ISPF edit, um, 
uh, commands. So this is a very, very simple one. And, um, and uh, that's all I will show today. Um, I'm back from vacation and, uh, and uh, uh, back again at creating uh, videos. I have a whole bunch of videos um, in the pipeline. And so expect to see a, a quick pace of videos in the, in the near future. Uh, again, I would urge you to um, uh, come open a, a, an account at, um, at my Cloud MVS instance um, by going to uh, the website moshit.dynum.net and there's a website there that will ask you for a few uh, um, brief details about yourself and then I will get the email and that will open the account for you. Also, we are on the Facebook uh, page, Moshik's channel. And in the description below this video, I will also link to our Discord channel, where a bunch of, uh, of enthusiasts and a bunch of uh, experts hang out and help each other get things done with uh, Hercules and MVS. So uh, that's it for today. I, if you like this video, please press on the thumbs up button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the Moshik's Mainframe channel on YouTube, please do so now so you get notifications of future videos. Thank you very much and goodbye.